The Lone Ranger. With the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. deeds of the Lone Ranger have become legends throughout the western United States. The masked rider of justice struck terror to the hearts of the lawless who preyed upon the law-abiding citizens of the Old West. And now, once more, the thunder of silver hoofs lead us down the trail of adventure. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, silver old fellow! Devil's waiting for us in the town of Green Tree! In the story, I know Ranger rode by on Silver. He said that he was riding toward Green Tree. A number of mysterious thefts had been committed in the town. The identity of the thief was unknown, but suspicion pointed toward 20-year-old Cole Williams, who was employed in the local bank by Jason Rudd. The story begins we see young Cole after he's returned home from a day at the bank. He is attempting to comfort his mother, who has heard the alarming news. <laughs> oh, son. I can't believe that Banker Rudd would charge you with such a thing. Now, please, Ma, don't take it like that. I ain't the prowl thief that's been working around town. I know you ain't cold. I trust you to my dying day. But the way they handle justice out here these days, there's many an innocent man framed for another's crime. I don't want to go to the meeting if you're going to cry this way. If you haven't faith that I'll be proved innocent, no one will have. There. There, now. I'll be all right, Cole. I know you ain't a thief. I know you're a good, hard-working lad that's done everything a boy could to help his ma. The good Lord won't let more trouble come to our family. He knows we had more than our share. Things are going to be all right. Mr. Rudd, the banker, and the sheriff and me are going to talk to old Baldy Bronson tonight. Oh, are you? Sure. I told you we'd be discussing the robberies and coming to some sort of understanding about them tonight. Baldy Bronson was the best sheriff this county ever had. He sure was, and he still has the best thinking head of any man around here. If his legs wasn't paralyzed from that spill he had, he'd still be sheriff. Well, you tell Sheriff Orson and Baldy that you've been home every night when folks lost their cash, and you can prove it by me. I'll tell them more. Why are they suspicion you in the first place? Mr. Rudd said it was because most of the folks that was robbed was ones that had just drawed cash out in the bank. And I'd be in a position to know just who they was. Well, that's a pretty thin reason to suspect a man of stealing. Of course, there's no reason to suspicion anyone else. No one else would know who the folks that drawed money was. Except Jason Rudd himself. He wouldn't do it. Of course, Baldy would know. His house being right near the bank, and he's sitting on the porch most of the time. <laughs> Not him, Ma. Uh, I don't suppose he would. Thanks. Well, I'll go to the meeting. Don't you worry no more about it, Ma. I'll trust in the Lord. Oh, Ma. 
What about that engine that wanted to water his horse? I see where he's still out front. Well, maybe he's hungry. If he is, I'll send him in. I suppose the next thing will happen will be that folks will criticize us for always helping a pilgrim. Well, we can't afford it. But on the other hand, we can't turn no man away. I'll be home as soon as I can get here, Mom. I'll be waiting for your call and trusting Baldy Bronson to find a way to locate the real thief to clear you of any suspicion. Bye, Mom. Bye. Get all the water you wanted, Injun? Uh, me, thank you. You want some vittles? You hungry? No. No, me. Me go now. Well, good camping and good luck. Get him up, white fella. Santo, the faithful Indian companion of the Lone Ranger, had overheard the conversation between Cole and his mother. When he rode away, he determined to repeat it to the masked man. In the meantime, Cole left for the home of Baldy Bronson, next door to the bank. There he found Jason and Sheriff Kurt Orson waiting for him. Evening, Mr. Rudd. I'm here, just like you said. Close the door and come in, Cole. We got some serious talking to do. Yes, sir. I, I reckon you're aiming to ask me about the robberies, ain't you? No, we ain't, Cole. We're forgetting about them for a while. We got something a heap more serious than that to talk about tonight. Baldy here will tell us about it. Son, you ain't heard anything about bank robbers being around this district, have you? Nope, I can't say as I have. reason we're sidetracking them small thefts is because there's bank robbers west of here. Oh. They've been working over this way, and Jason's worried. But what's that guy? Baldy suggested it'd be a good idea to hide the bank's money. But it's in the safe. From what we hear of these hombres, a safe don't stop them. They use blasting powder and blow it up if they can't unlock it. Gosh. Baldy thought we'd better take the cash out of there and hide it. You, you letting me know about this? Why not? You work for me, don't you? You suspicion me of stealing cash from some of the folks in town. Oh, it wasn't that, Cole. I just said you knew who drew money from the bank. That's a little different than you said before. You just didn't savvy, Cole. Forget it. Better get on with the plans, Jason. Yeah, Sheriff. We plan to hide the cash in the back closet of the bank, Cole. It's most all folding money, so it'll be easy to handle. The back closet? But that ain't even got a lock on the door. That's why the crooks and everything to look there. I see. And we're the only four to know about it. That's right, Baldy. You and the sheriff here has got to know, in case of trouble with robbers. And if I was hurt or anything happened to me... Cole would have to be able to get the money. Yeah, that's so. Well, then, I reckon that's all, gents. Me and Cole will go over to the bank and take care of moving the cash tonight. Thanks for your suggestion, Baldy. I don't know what we'd do without you. <laughs> Won't them outlaws get a nice surprise if they do show up? They'll be marrying a bunch of wet hornets if they blow open the safe and find it empty. <laughs> morning, Jason Rudd rose early and opened the bank an hour before the usual time. He went at once to the place where the money had been hidden and discovered that the cash box had been stolen. He rushed to Sheriff Orson's home. Uh, Sheriff, hey, Sheriff! Sheriff! Sheriff Orson, wake up! Come on out here! Did it work, Jason? Did it work? <laughs> Worked as slick as silk. The cash is gone. Come on, then. Baldy's the man to call on next. By thunder, I got a hand it to Baldy. He worked out a scheme to catch Cole Williams with a good. I'll go with you right now. I'll get my breakfast later on. I was so blamed anxious to see how the whole scheme would work out that I got up with the sun. It won't be hard to pin the guilt on Williams. Inside of ten minutes, I have a confession from him. That ought to be easy. I didn't steal the cash, and I know you didn't steal it. And Baldy couldn't steal it. Where do we see what Baldy has to say about it? Uh, he's right on the front porch. Same as usual. Yep. Hi there, Joe. Morning, Mr. Rudd. Come here, Jason. I've got things to tell you. We're coming. Joe, you can go on about your business now. We ain't needing you for a time. All right, Baldy. Let me know when you want me to tote you back to the house. I will. Set yourself down there, Sheriff Orson. Well, thanks, but we got to We be... got to make an arrest, Baldy. So the cash was stolen? Yep, box and all. Well, Williams did it. I seen him. You did? Yeah, I was sitting close to the window watching for him. If it wasn't him that stole it, it was someone that looked a heck of a lot like him. Couldn't see well in the dark, could you, Baldy? No, but it was a man the size of Williams. Uh, we'll tell Cole that you've seen him good and clear. That'll help to break him down. 
And there won't be no question about his confessing. And handing back the cash money he stole. No, we check with Baldy. We'll go call on Cole. Mm. This will end the petty thieving that's been going around town, all right. After hearing Tonto's story, the masked man had made the acquaintance of Cole and his mother in an effort to solve the thefts in the town. We see him with his Indian companion alone in the big kitchen of the Williams' home the same morning. Being friends with the Williams folks will give us a good start at solving these crimes, Tonto. Mm, that's right. I'm glad we came here first thing this morning. Here's some breakfast, piping hot, stranger. Thank you, Mr. Williams. There. There now, fall to and eat your fill. <laughs> I sure feel in good spirits this morning. What's happened just goes to prove that it's good judgment to put your trust in heaven. That's right, Ma. It wasn't half an hour after you said that last night that Mr. Rudd showed that he trusted me. I don't suppose you men have heard of outlaws working this way, bank robbers. No, we haven't. You not think us bad fellows? Six alive, no. I don't judge a man a crook just because his face is masked. My goodness, look at that mystery rider. Who? Why, that man that rides the white horse, the one they call the Lone Ranger. He travels masked. Oh. I reckon there ain't no outlaw about him. Baldy Bronson sure has a smart head on his shoulders, Ma. I-, I told you last night when I come in how he planned a scheme to trap the bank thieves. Or at least to fool them if they come to town. Yes, you told me about the scheme, Cole. There's one thing I didn't savvy. What's that? If they figured the thieves would strike at Mr. Rudd's bank, why didn't they leave someone on hand to watch it? Gosh, that's an idea. Seems to me that would have been a whole lot better judgment than just to hide the money so the robbers couldn't get it. Well, I reckon they didn't come last night anyhow. I didn't hear no blast, did you? No. And Baldy Bronson said they blows the safe up with powder if they rob a bank. Don't you think we'd have heard that? Seems like. There seems to be a group of people coming toward the house. Oh, uh... Maybe they got word about the thieves. I'll open the door and see who's there. There's quite a few riders in that group. Why, there's Sheriff Orson. Yeah, and Mr. Rudd and a couple of deputies. But they're coming here, Cole. They must have word of the thieves. Reckon they have. If you don't mind, we'll step into the other room where they won't see us. The stranger. Come, I, don't, I don't want to explain my mask right now. Uh, we go. Here, Mr. Williams, take these extra plates. Put them away. Well, uh, all right. Oh. Hiya, sir. What's the matter, Sheriff? We ought to leave the coyote. Watch out, see, you don't slip out the back. Leave yeah. that door open. Oh, what are they talking like that for? Oh, gosh, I, I don't know. They talk like they wanted you again. But they can. I, I don't know what this means. We want you, Williams. You robbed my bank. And you're going to jail for it. What are you talking about? We've been suspecting you for some time. But now we got you trapped so we won't be able to get away. But, you Sheriff... You stole the money from the bank last night and you were seen doing it. Seen? The bank? I never did. I never stole a thing. I was not in the house last night. There must be a mistake, Sheriff. Mr. Rudd, Cole was right here at home all night. I can vouch for it. You boys look around. See if we can find any sign of the cash box. Oh, that whole scheme last night, Cole, was just a trap for you. Well, oh, Sheriff, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. Don't try to pull the wool over our eyes. We've got you now. We suspected all along that you was the one done this thieving around town. But I didn't, I tell you, I didn't. I never stole a thing from anybody. You stole money from the bank last night. That's not true. Baldy Bronson had the idea. He figured we could trap you by making you think there was an easy chance to steal the bank's money and have some outlaws from another county get the blame for it. Yeah, so we let you in on the plan. There never was no bank robbers. <laughs> Reckon that surprised you some, didn't it? I didn't take the money. Hi, sir. Look at that box. What's that, Jake? Looks like a cash box to me. It is. It's the box the money was put in. All right, Williams. That's enough. Are you going to confess we have to get rough with you? Where did you hide that money? I didn't hide the money. I didn't take the money. That cash box hid under the stoop is evidence enough. I never That's stole... the box the cash was in. You took the money out. Where'd you put it? Talk, you little sneak thief, and I'll make you wish you had. Where's my money? I ain't got it. I never had it. I don't know nothing about it. I ain't no use trying to deny it. There's just four men knew where that cash was hid. I didn't take it. I don't know where it went. I don't know who took it. All right, boys, take him to jail. He'll talk before I'm done questioning him. The curtain falls on the first act of tonight's Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now 
to continue our story. Baldy Bronson, ex-sheriff of Green Tree, originated a plan to trap the thief who had been stealing sums of money in town. Cole Williams was permitted to know where certain bank funds were hidden. Then when they disappeared, he was jailed for the theft. An empty cash box found beneath the steps of Cole's home seemed to complete the evidence against him. But the Lone Ranger and Tonto, convinced of the young man's innocence, returned to town that night. We'll call on Baldy Bronson, Tonto. He'll be able to tell us a lot about this scheme that trapped Cole Williams. Him, Sheriff, long time back. Yes, and he was a good one, too. There aren't many men like Bronson. Him get bad hurt in fall. His legs were paralyzed, but it hasn't made him bitter as it would most men. He's been content to watch things happen around him. Oh, there's his house right ahead. Baldy will tell us the truth. That's right. I'm not convinced that Cole Williams is the crook. Maybe Sheriff Crook. I'd believe Sheriff Orson's crooked as soon as I would Cole Williams. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh. oh, I saw it. Oh. I'll go up and take a look on that window first, Tonto. I want to make sure no one's in the house with Baldy. Uh, better, better you talk to him alone. Yes. Here's the window. Quiet now. There he is, sitting by the stove. Him alone? Yes. What you ask him? He's shrewd and understands the situation in town as well as anyone. Mm, that's right. I don't see anything of the man who runs his errands for him. Mm, that not matter. Go back, Tonto, and stay with the horses. Man, not alone. You want, Tonto, you call him. Very well, keep us at me. A friend. Open the door and walk right in. Why, what? Your mask. You're Baldy Bronson? Yes, but who the Sam Hill are you? I'm here to ask you for the truth about Cole Williams. Are you the fellow that ran away from his place this morning? Yes. You get out in here. I ain't had nothing to do with a masked man. I came here to get your opinion about Cole Williams. He's guilty. That's all there is to it. Have you any proof of that? I seen him last night. I seen him going right by my window heading for the bank. It was pretty dark last night. My eyes is good. There ain't many men around here his size. What about the sheriff? Uh, it's not the sheriff. I know that. Why are you so anxious to see Cole Williams found guilty? I'm anxious to see a crook jailed, that's all. You helped frame Williams for that robbery last night. I admit this much, stranger. Ain't none of your business, but I'm admitting it. I did lay out a scheme to trap him, and he was trapped. He stole the cash from where Jason Rudd hid it. Sometimes facts are not what they seem. What are you getting at? It would have been easy for someone else to have stolen that money and put the cash box under Williams' porch. You got any ideas? Other men besides Cole Williams knew that money was to be hidden. I don't know nothing about that, stranger. But the facts stand as far as I'm concerned. Williams was suspected of having stolen money around town. And what he done last night proves it. His mother says he didn't leave the house. <laughs> you ever yet seen a lad's mother that wouldn't lie to save him from jail? Oh, boy, I... Hey, now, stick your hands up. Take it easy. Keep him covered, Joe. I hanker to find out who this masked man is. Yeah, well, we'll find out pronto. He been making trouble for you, Baldy? No, he's here for information. But it looks to me like he's in cahoots with Cole Williams. Lucky thing I come. Just drop by to see if you want me to fetch you anything before you turn in for the night. Yeah, I want my pipe over there by the stove. I'll toss it to you. Don't you move, stranger. You're covered. How about your tobacco? I got that right here. Now then, stranger, suppose you take that mask off and let us have a look at your face. I came here for your help, Baldy, but you don't seem willing to give it to me. If you're a friend of Cold Williams, let me give you some advice. Yes? Don't interfere in things that ain't your business. Now take off that mask. I don't think I will. Take it off. You heard what Baldy said. Take off that mask, or I'll take it off for you. You drop him down. Don't look out. What get the gun, Tonto. You get him. Dad, grab it in. Don't, don't, don't let him lick you. Oh, oh, oh. Hold him, you. You're covered. Stay right where you are. You'll pay for this. You'll pay. Listen, yes, get your horse, Tonto. You won't get away with this. You just wait. I learned what I wanted to know, Baldy. Thanks for the help you gave me. Down, square thing. Hey, hold it. rode away, Sheriff Kurt Orson was questioning Cole in an effort to make him tell the hiding place of the money he was accused of stealing. We got the boxes in. Now you may as well confess. I didn't take it. I ain't done nothing to confess. You want me to get real tough with you? It won't matter if you do. You got me locked in jail already for a crime I never done. 
I was to home last night. You deny you went to the bank? Yes. That shows you're lying. By your own admission, you went there with Jason Rudd to put the cash in that closet. But I mean... Now you say you wasn't there at all. I was there with Mr. Rudd. I didn't go back there after that. So you got the cash while you was there the first time? Oh, no, no, that ain't it. Then how did you get it? I didn't, I... Oh, what's the use? They ain't no use of me denying that I stole it. You got me framed there tight. You wouldn't even believe my ma. She told you I was home all the time. Oh, oh, oh. All right, deputy. Tell whoever that is that I'm busy. I ain't going to be disturbed. Let me see the sheriff. He's busy, Joe. Busy or not, he's got to come. William's masked partner just left Baldy's house. What's that? What masked partner? Sheriff, come on fast. Baldy's needing you. What for? Cole had some pods. A masked man and a redskin. Them two. Are... What's that? What about him, Williams? Who are they? I don't know. I... You don't know? I, I, I do know who he's talking about, but I don't know who they are. One of them is on the same horse that ran away from Cole's house when you put him under arrest. I remember. He was hit inside the house. What do you know about him? Nothing. Well, he's the one we want. He's like the one that got the cash Cole told. Well, come on, then. Get some men and start out after him. That redskin knocked me down. The masked man threw guns on us. Deputy. Yes, sir. Keep a close watch on the prisoner. Don't let no one get to talk to him. And don't let no one in this building. All right, boss. Likely this masked man will try to bust Cole out before he squeals. And you, you only bank thief, you count on being busted out. That's why you won't squeal. No. Well, come on, Joe. We'll go hunt this masked man. You don't need to. What? What? You. Ranger, you're in trouble of your neck. I do, Covered. Don't move fast, Sheriff. That's him, Sheriff. That's the critter. Oh, gun and me, will you? Well, by Sunday, you'll pay for it. You'll pay if it's the last thing I see done. I'm here to show you the real thief. And it is not Cole Williams. Who is it, then? Name him. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. I'll have to show you and show you proof. That's why you're coming with me. Like fun I am. Come, you too, Joe. But see, I... There's not a great deal of time. I want you too, Deputy. Me? Yes. Just to make sure you don't cause trouble, I'm going to rope you all together and take your weapons. I need your help, Williams. But, stranger, don't let yourself in for a term in jail. There ain't no way you can help me. Some dirty rat's been framing me, lying about me, and they've done a complete job of it. So you'll see about that. I'll take these two. Oh, Stand back. Go. Keep your hands where they are. I won't get far. Come out of there, Williams. Take their guns and rope them while I keep them covered. We have to get Jason Rudd to come with us. the sheriff and the deputy, were roped together. Then, guarded by Cole Williams, they were forced to accompany the Lone Ranger to Jason Rudd's home. The masked man, guns in hand, aroused the unwilling banker. Come with us and without argument. Say, you can't get away with rotting a man out of bed at gunpoint. We'll discuss that later on. You're coming with me. Cole Williams is outside. Cole Williams? You mean he's out of jail? Yes. The sheriff and his deputy are there also, and so is Joe. What the Sam Hill's taking place? One of the Indian guards is going to strike at the real criminal within the next few minutes. And you're all going to be on hand to see it. was added to the small group, then at the command of the Lone Ranger they mounted and rode toward the home of Baldy Bronson. Just before they reached their destination, the masked man gave them the word to dismount. Pull up here! Oh, oh, oh. Come the rest of the way on foot. Oh, oh, no. oh, 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 oh. Now, all of you. You'll have no choice. Come on. I spoke of an Indian god. I meant the god of fire. Behind that house you'll see my friend Tato. He's waiting for the signal from me. I'll have to hear, stranger. I can still deal lenient with you if you don't go no further. They're going all the way, Sheriff. I'm taking desperate measures, but I know no other way to convince you of the truth. They wouldn't believe me if I didn't show you. Show us what? The man who prowled this town in the night, stealing from those who drew money from the bank. Cole Williams. No, it wasn't Williams. It was the man you've all trusted. The man who lives in that house. Baldy Bronson. What? Oh, oh, that ain't I knew you'd doubt that. Why, I took care of Baldy ever since he was hurt. He can't walk. Baldy knew who drew cash from the bank. He lives right next door. 
Bowley's the one who suggested setting the trap to frame Cole Williams. You're all wrong, and I'll show you if you let me go speak to Bowley. Not just yet. I went there to speak to him, thinking he'd know more about the situation than anyone else in town. I looked through that window to see if he was alone. He was. Baldy was sitting by the stove, cleaning his pipe. I went to the door, and in the meantime, he had left his chair and crossed the room. Because a little later on, he asked Joe here to get him his pipe from the stove. That's a cooked up here, and ain't a shred of truth. Very well. Then you'll need more convincing. You'll get it. All right, Timosabe. What's that redskin going to do? Watch, and you'll see. He's setting fire there. Burning him all Watch. Watch closely. He'll be burned alive in there. Here we are. If I'm wrong, Tom will get him from the house in time. You'll hang for this. Cut the ropes, Cole. We need the hand. Cut those ropes. All right, if you say so. I'll release you, Sheriff. Here's your gun. And the first thing I have to do is. Steady. I'm still covering you. Help! 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 Fire. He's running. He's coming out alone. He can walk. Look at him. What about it, Sheriff? If this he don't walks. beat on. And look what he has in his hand. What's he trying to save? The money bag. The bags I put in the bank last night. Come on, come on, Deputy. What's the mask bag? Oh, never mind him. There's the man we want. Hold on that branch and you're under arrest. Why, you? You tried to trick me. Oh, so you've been the crook all the time. Ain't a thing you can say to law set the evidence for that money. That fire. That fire. If it hadn't been for that, you never would have known Yes, I can walk as good as any of you. I can never be sheriff again. That's why I did it. I confess the whole thing. You're all right, coyote. I'm long enough sheriff to know any defense is useless. The use of my legs come back, and I kept still about it, figuring a way to make me rich. There's your money, Jason. Well, well, Shucks, well, as for that sack, that, huh? now that it's served yeah. its purpose, you can keep it. Keep it? You mean to say you ain't looked in it since you stole it last night? No. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I didn't like the trust of the law trapping Cole Williams and getting back the money, so I didn't put cash in the box. I put in blank paper instead. And I get catched in my own trap, trying to steal blank paper. have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Hey, thank you for listening to Good Old Radio and the Lone Ranger. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. We'd really appreciate that. Bye now. <laughs>